What's up everyone? It's been a while since we've spoken about OLED monitors here. In fact, it's been a while since we've done any videos and really there's only one reason. I went ahead and swapped my Odyssey G7 for the Alienware AW3423DWF. For the past couple of months, I have been gaming incessantly without stop, completely given up on doing any YouTube videos simply because wherever I had any free time, I was using it on playing games on this monitor. That's how brilliant it is. But without further ado, we're going to head straight into the best settings that you need to apply to this monitor if you've already bought it. Right then, so for the AW3423DWF, the place you want to start for your best settings is this community guide set up by this ultra wide master race community focusing on this monitor and its settings. We're going to go through these one by one and I'm going to take you through all of these and just talk through some of the settings here. I don't agree with everything in, in here and I've made some changes that I'll explain why and then you can use whichever setting you think is best for your particular needs. First thing you want to do is make sure you've got Windows 11. A lot of these settings work better on, on Windows 11. Second thing is to make sure you've got the latest firmware downloaded. When you download this file, it will come with a simple PDF explaining how to do the update. So just follow that, get it done. Second thing you want to do is you want to download the Dell Display Manager application. Basically, this allows you to access the monitor's settings without having to interact with the external menu interaction button. This makes life a lot easier. Then the next thing you need is the Windows HDR calibration app. We're going to use this just to do some HDR calibration. Make sure you've got that downloaded. Okay, so now moving into the settings themselves. So we've got the NVIDIA control panel here firstly. We're just going to head over to adjust desktop color settings here. And we're going to ensure we've got brightness controls at 50%, gamma at 1, and that's it. We then switch to the video color settings here. We want to make sure that we've got this option selected with NVIDIA settings. Don't touch color, don't touch gamma. Go to advanced and make sure you've got full selected and click apply. And that's it for the NVIDIA control panel. Moving on from there, we'll go into the Windows 11's HDR settings. I haven't got HDR turned on, therefore you're not able to see HDR here. But as soon as you turn HDR on your monitor, you'll see some very simple settings here. You want to make sure you follow this just simply turn HDR video streaming on, HDR on, auto HDR on, and then you can play about with the SDR contrast content brightness as well. This one's quite useful, this settings here, because when you turn HDR on, you can no longer change the brightness of your monitor. So at the moment, the slider is showing, but when you have HDR turned on, this slider will be grayed out. And that's standard for when you're using HDR. The only way you can change that brightness is in Windows in this SDR content brightness slider here. His recommendation is 35. My recommendation is 20. I like lower brightness on my monitor. Okay, moving on to the display manager. Now, we want to make sure that our contrast is set to 67%. You can play about with the settings. I have experimented with this and it really does make performance better in HDR mode. Outside of HDR, you can change that to wherever you want in terms of your preference. I just stick with 67% across all aspects. It works for me. Okay, then you want to go into this color tab and here you can now set a manual mode or an automatic mode. What this guy is asking us to do is to stick with display HDR, which I can demonstrate in a different option here because I haven't got HDR turned on. It's not showing it in that color tab, but these are the different HDR modes we've got. Desktop, movie, game, custom color, display, and HDR peak 1000. What this guy is going to suggest to do here, if you follow that, is to have display HDR selected for desktop and then the HDR peak 1000 selected for any game you play. I disagree with this. In HDR peak 1000 mode, there is over brightness the brightness is not accurate. So in my humble opinion, stick with display HDR mode for any time I'm using HDR. That's it. Okay, then moving on to the Windows HDR calibration. 
This one is very simple to follow. Again, it's because I don't have HDR turned on currently. You won't see this and I can't actually uh, show this, but it's very simple. Open the, the, the application, click the get started button here and follow these settings. And then you just have to save that HDR calibrated profile at the end of those four steps. You then go into Windows Color Management, which is just to make sure that this setting is selected, use my settings for this device. And then in the ICC profiles, you wanna make sure that your latest calibrated HDR profile is selected. Just bear in mind again here, it's not showing the HDR version or the HDR option because I have HDR turned off. But when you turn it on, you'll see those options. You just wanna make sure you follow them. I'm just gonna quickly cover some of the other things that are available in the Dell Display Manager that you could play about with. As I say, brightness, if it's HDR, you can't change it. You'll have to do it in the SDR brightness within Windows. But other than that, this is your preference. Uh, during the day, I'm sort of ranging between 50 to 70%. I never go all the way to 100%. Uh, within a input source, the only thing that I find useful is some hotkeys for switching between input sources. I don't have multiple sources, so I don't use this, but this could be very useful for you. In the color tab, we've already covered the automation where you can set it to manual or auto and have different applications automatically switch between different modes uh, depending on when you open them. The point here is that if you have HDR turned off, you will not see the HDR options. You'll see the standard FPS, RTS, or whatever other uh, presets you've got set up. When you turn HDR on, you'll then see the five or six HDR modes. So that's the only thing you need to know here, and then you can set it up as you want accordingly. Dark Stabilizer is very, very useful. I use level one for my FPS competitive gaming. And here you can then turn HDR on as well. As I say, I always have this selected display HDR and that's it. Okay, so we're gonna just go through any remaining settings in the actual external menu interface. So it's quite nice when you turn it on, um, you get the sort of uh, status there in terms of which preset mode you're in, which uh, whether your HDR is on, your panel health, your dart stabilizer, and then you can navigate between some hotkeys if you wanna call them, or you can just go up and go straight into the main menu. Now, hey, we're in the main menu. I'm just going to quickly turn the transparency up for this so that uh, you can see this better. Hopefully that's a bit better. Yeah, that looks a bit good, but I'm just going to bring you in. There we go. Going to, uh, top down from this first tab called Game. There's the preset modes. You can switch between standard FPS. There's a bunch of things there. Um, these options will not be available if you've got HDR on. They're not the HDR um, preset modes. So they won't be able to, this will be grayed out, or if you try to select it, it'll give you a message that you can't select these when you're in HDR mode. When you've got HDR off, really, the only time I've got, to, I, I'm choosing between these is when I'm playing Warzone 2 for competitive gaming, because then I'll go into FPS mode and I'll have to turn HDR off. When I've got that on for FPS mode, I'll make sure my dark stabilizer is on at one, and that's it. None of the other settings matter. You can change the brightness to, to your liking. Contrast, we've already said, has to be at 67. So for, for competitive gaming, that's my recommended settings. Does the job. You could go higher on the dark stabilizer. And as you can see, it really changes the darkness uh, or how dark the dark bits are. But it, it really reduces uh, the visual quality of the game. I find one does the job. For whenever um, I want to go really low light in my room, I have to turn display HDR or HDR off because you can't go below a certain threshold of brightness, then I'll go standard and make sure my dark stabilizer is off. And then I can change my brightness down to as low as I want. So those are the sort of three modes that I'm shifting between after experimenting with most of them. That's what I find does the job for me for most scenarios. Okay, now going through the rest of these settings, we've got the console mode was recommended to be turned on in the Reddit uh, guide that I've shared here previously. This being on would help with um, some games appearing really washed out in HDR sometimes. However, some Redditors are now reporting that since the new uh, version 3 firmware, this is no longer needed. 
And I can concur with that. I haven't had any issues with grayed out, sort of washed out images uh, since the new firmware uh, update. So I keep console mode off. It's basically to do with the source tone mapping and changing some settings for better compatibility with Xbox and PS5. So it doesn't do anything for me, therefore I'm turning it off. Then we've got Alien Vision. It allows you to have some strange uh, things that, that I don't really use ever in game. I mean, Crosshair, it's just too too big. I've never used that for, for competitive gaming. You can go into Chroma, you can go into Clear, you can have a night mode. I've not really ever used them. I think it's a bit of a gimmick, but um, knock yourself out if, uh, if you need it. Then we've got the lighting, which you can configure into a bunch of different colors. For me, it's behind the monitor. I can't see it, so I keep it off all the time just to save energy. They're really beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but I can't see them, so it's no point. Um, they don't even shine onto my wall, so I just don't see the point of having them on. Then, yeah, you can have uh, your aspect ratio change. I don't know why you'd want to change your from 21 by 9, but you've got the options there. Um, you can switch between uh, RGB and YCBCR. I keep to, to RGB because that's better for most use cases. YCBCR has some, uh, some uses in uh, productivity, but the option's there. The sharpness I don't change for higher clarity in, in game, like uh, in Warzone 2, I'll just use the NVIDIA filter, I won't change that. And then we've got the Smart HDR, that's just HDR basically, and you can choose between all those HDR options. I would recommend to stick with Display HDR True Black as previously stated. For more details on what those modes do and why you, you should stick with the HDR True Black, have a look at Hardware Unboxed Detail Review. Then you've got the picture in picture modes here. You can change the audio, got the menu settings. You can personalize the shortcut keys and then got uh, display info, giving you the model number, etc. And these are the, the settings for the, the panel maintenance. These will give you, yeah, you can turn it all off, but that's highly not recommended. You should let that work. And every time it tells you or prompts you to do this uh, pixel refresh, let it do it, but you can tell it to postpone it until you go into standard standby mode the next time. So if you're in game, you can just quickly select the option to do it in standby mode. The next time the monitor goes into it. Firmware, service tag, and then self uh, diagnostic, which allows you to flick through all the different colors just to see if there's any issues with any dead pixels or any uh, ghosting or, or burning appearing. As you can see, my paddle here is absolutely perfect so far. No issues at all which is expected because it's only two months old. And that's it. That covers all the settings.